And I'm Audra Coble. Tonight on Fox, the Green Bay Packers hope to stay alive in the playoffs as they head into Atlanta to face the top bracket team in the debauchery. NFC. The men on the strand sees how many people's brackets were upset by the upsets. Plus, who's your cup teams, one. but also an opportunity for these young fans to get an up close view of NASCAR. Jeff Burton, who is eighth in the point standing, he's getting ready to head out to happy hour. Thought we'd he's in games. It can still be done, but a win Saturday is a must. Troy is actually one of the tougher offenses they face all year long. What to expect going into the game? Freshman running back Marcus Lattimore to present touches early on in the game. And looking past Troy, what will the win over Clemson mean for this team? Well, How do you prepare for Cam Newton? I don't, I don't know. I have to wait Kelly to. Kelly uh, says there's a secret to this track. Have you found it? Well, I about the comments you made um, earlier in the week about if you're not in the top five of the Cup championship, you really don't have a chance to win. Well, I think we look at the points. I think. You can't have a comeback if you're not behind. Well, I mean, we um, we don't believe it's over. We know that things got to happen. But according to one chase driver, for half the drivers, the race may already be over. And Kyle Busch would seem to agree with that. He publicly stated on Sunday that his hopes are over after California when he finished 35th after an engine failure and dropped to ninth in the two winning the cup. Do you think that you have a chance? Well, you know, I mean, you after uh, the two penalty. drivers that have a chance at winning the championship. Problems he no, had. How, how is his momentum now? Is he ready to go? Is he charged up? Is there anything uh, technical that has changed with his car? Jason Casey well, Kane is going to be joining your team next year. What does it mean to Red Bull to have a driver like Casey Kane? Well, we certainly want to compete in Joe Iowa. Gibbs' cars no matter where we're at or who's driving their cars. Well, let's talk about Kyle Busch. He has a chance to make history tonight. If he uh, wins the Nationwide Series, he could sweep it for the Charlotte events for 2010. Well, Kyle Busch, at 25 years old. When the checkered flag drops Saturday night, the chase race will be half over. But as one chase driver puts it, the race may already be over for half the drivers. Harvick, who since third in the standing, says it's really unrealistic to win the championship if you sit anywhere outside the top five. Kyle Busch seems to echo that sentiment as he said publicly Sunday it was over for him after a blown engine dropped him to 35th place in the California race and ninth in the standings. Jeff Burton, who sits eighth in the standings, says he still has hope. He says in order to have a comeback, you've got to be behind. Any way you look at it, they've all got their work cut out for them to deny points leader Jimmy Johnson his fifth straight title. Reporting from the Charlotte Motor Speedway, I'm Audra Coble. And I'm Audra Coble. Tonight on Fox, the Green Bay Packers hope to stay alive in the playoffs as they head into Atlanta to face the top team in the NFC. Before we preview tonight's game, let's look at some recent changes for the Panthers. The Carolina Panthers have hired a new head coach. Fox's Kelly Bartik has a word with the coach and tells us what's next for former coach John Fox. John Fox traded in his blue and black coaching gear for, wait for it, a spiffy suit and tie. A Broncos orange tie, that is. Hey, you got to impress the bosses, right? Wow, looking foxy there, John. Thanks, Kelly. Well, just like we said last week, the Panthers again have picked a defensive coordinator. Is Rivera a good fit for Carolina, though? Well, as, as Kelly said, he's the, the San Diego Chargers had the news to the forefront. This Baltimore Ravens defense is very impressive in their win over Kansas City. Absolutely. Defense wins every time, I say. Well, last Saturday night, Peyton Manning led his Colts in a fourth quarter rally, taking the lead with under a minute left in the game. But Mark Sanchez and the New York Jets had just enough time to drive down the field and set up a game winning field goal. The Colts had control of the ball and control of the clock. Did Peyton mismanage the situation? Although I can't imagine Peyton ever mismanaging anything. Yeah, he's, he's a micromanager. And in that game, if. Well, Sunday, the Green Bay Packers clipped the high-flying Eagles, putting an end to the incredible comeback season of Michael Vick. What was the key to Green Bay's victory? They found a running game. And they that was the thing did. we talked about last <laughs> yes. week here on, here on the show. If you were listening in, you used the ball 16 times for 82 yards. The playmakers for the Philadelphia Eagles didn't get involved in this game, right. and that's why, they, that's why the Green Bay Packers won. And who called that game? Who said the, the better defense was going to win? Mm -hmm, that's right. Get them while they're young is all the buzz everywhere from track presidents to sponsors, and it seems Darlington is taking advantage of that here today with lowering ticket prices, autograph sessions with the drivers, photo opportunities with the drivers, grabbing them while they're young. The truck series race here today in Darlington is not only 
an opportunity to keep that momentum of NASCAR going on this off week for cup teams, but also an opportunity for these young fans to get an up close view of NASCAR. As they say, a fan today more than likely a fan 25 years from now. Reporting in Darlington from the track Too Tough to Tame, I'm Audra Coble. Why is this truck race so important to keep the momentum of NASCAR going during this off week? Well, I think the track is important to be at. It's uh, you know it's a good track for everybody to come and race. And um, I don't know, we're off, so I thought it'd be a good time to race. I didn't, I didn't, not ready for an off weekend yet. So we just come down and race and mm -hmm. uh, enjoy the rest of the next week. How's the transition into Red Bull going for you? It's been good. It's um, you know really it's uh, it's been pretty easy. The guys have. They do a really nice job and um, it's a really good attitude. It's something different than what we've had for a while. So it's, it's been nice to be part of Red Bull and I think we can do really well as the season goes on. How do you keep your head in the game knowing that um, you're replacing Mark Martin in the near future? I don't really think about it. I've, you know, I think the Red Bull car is really all I need. Well, to if you're like right us, <laughs> you filled out an NCAA basketball bracket, whether at work or at school or just among your friends. Well, last week, we even gave you some tips on how to fill them out. Yeah, and whether or not you used our tips or followed a strategy of your own, chances are that after this weekend's games, your brackets are all in pretty bad shape. In fact, all of the people who filled out theirs on ESPN.com no one still has a perfect bracket. To find out how well yours is coming along, we sent our man on the strand, Tyler, to the streets. And tells the lower seed or what? I was also drunk. I don't even remember who's playing who anymore. <laughs> I hope you wrote it down and kept a copy. A lot of big upsets this week. Yeah. Moorhead uh, State uh, beating Louisville and uh, rather Pittsburgh beating Butler. Not looking too good for the for the bracket for myself. Actually, Butler beat um, Pittsburgh. Right. Yeah, because that completely messed my brackets up. But I, I'm going for Duke. Yeah, uh, yeah. I should have kept flipping the coin. Well, if you've okay. Been here for a few years now, what is different about this team? Well, this is. <laughs> I mean, since I've been here, you know, there's been different teams, but I, I guess this team is is has got it. It whatever it is, they got it. Or we got it. Excuse me. Who has stepped up um, on the field and in the locker room as leaders? Well, as a leader, you know. Looking past the Troy game to the Clemson Carolina game, what would a win over Clemson mean to you? Uh, really, I don't know. I'm not. I, coach always tells us we don't look past nobody. We focus on Troy right now. Well, how do you stay mentally strong going into a game, knowing that such a big game, such as the conference championship, is looming? Uh, you just watch them propound the football field as well as in the meeting rooms, and just stay focused. Um, do you do they teach you any exercises to do for that to stay nah, mentally strong? Nah, <laughs> just just. The Gamecocks and their fans certainly had a lot to celebrate Saturday night, perhaps a little bit more than anyone else who had just captured their first Eastern Division title. But it's back to work today. Coach Spurrier says the Gamecocks still have a lot to achieve, and it begins Saturday against Troy. Spurrier says the goal was to win nine regular season games. It can still be done, but a win Saturday is a must. Not a flashy game, he says, but it all counts the same in the win column. Reporting from Williams-Brice Stadium, I'm Audra Coble.